Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today's video is about preparing, preparing for the future. Uh, I'm really looking forward to planting the black spruces in their forest type planting and uh, I've got a lot of good ideas for that and I'm also preparing for the new greenhouse that will be coming in. So let's review the last couple of days and we can take a look and see what I've been up to. Here is an update to our front yard. We have cables, giant cables in the front yard. Every color under the sun. So here's the cables they're putting in, the new fiber optic cables. So hopefully my internet won't be cutting out all the time. I took that load of insulation to the dump and I took all my bins and I filled them up with wood chips for the new bonsai area. Laura's working on digging up the peach tree. This peach tree just grew here all by itself. So she wants to move it to the greenhouse because it's in the way here. We want to be able to get vehicles back here. So here's the area where all the benches are going to go for now. There's all the ducks relaxing down here. So I'm working on cleaning up all my old pots here, sorting through them, getting rid of the ones that are cracked or damaged, keeping only the good ones. And then I put my wood chips down over here to kind of level this area and get rid of all the weeds and grass that's growing there so I can put my bonsai benches in this area. So that'll be nice. It's a good sunny spot. We are due for rain today. Right now it's sunny, but uh, there's cold weather and clouds blowing in. So we'll see, maybe it'll rain, I don't know. I got a good question in the comments section. Uh, someone asked me about bringing the trees from indoors into the greenhouse here. And they were asking about sunburn. And I find because I have the plastic here and it's not really a clear plastic, it's sort of more opaque, not opaque, but sort of cloudy. It diffuses the light. And even though they're kind of in the sun here, they don't get enough sun that it burns the leaves. And sometimes they get a little bit of leaf burn, but not, not a whole lot. So I can bring the trees directly from the plant room out into the greenhouse here. And you know, without any leaf burn, you can see this sarissa here. It's new leaves growing in. There's no, not much leaf burn on it at all. So yeah, and once they get used to the uh, conditions in the greenhouse here, then later on in the summer when the sun's a little less intense outside, I take them out of the greenhouse and put them on the benches. So it's sort of, they're always in transition, I guess. My little accent plants are doing well this year. Growing nicely. This is the pineapple weed or wild chamomile. And I don't know what this one is. Oh, there's a bit of wild chamomile in there too. But uh, it's some kind of sort of short ground cover type weed. I've got garlic growing over here. That was just like a head of uh, one of the seed pods on top of the garlic stalk. I just planted it in there, the whole thing, and it's growing. And I've got my fern up here that's, I'm going to repot it into one of uh, Wayne's pots, these really nice pots. It says Wayne on it. Yeah, so that's coming up. I can hear the machine that puts the cables in in the background. So I'm going to be moving all the trees off the benches and maybe, you know, over to these boxes and benches over here for now and then we'll move I'll get Julian to help me to move these metal tables over to the new area and I've got to move all these patio stones that they're placed on otherwise they sink into the ground so that's why I've got underneath I've got bricks and patio stones and things to support them so it's back to work until maybe the rain hits here's a shot of all the cables going across our driveway down into the ground.
Laura has gotten her tree out of the ground. She's posing like a kill. <laughs> Except this isn't killing it, it's keeping it alive. So here's the root system that it had. It's fairly, fairly good. Um, so we're gonna kind of make it a large scale bonsai in our greenhouse. So it's got a good kind of flat radial root system. There's the size of the hole she had to dig to get it out. And yeah, she got most of the roots, which is just amazing. And it's the right time of the year, so I predict good success for this cherry tree. And you can see up here, or it's not cherry, it's a peach tree. Up here, there's all kinds of blossoms on the tree. So hopefully it won't interrupt it too much. So that was hard work, eh, Laura? Yeah, <laughs> all right. While Laura's been digging her tree out, I've been working on the bonsai bench here, which is now gone. There's an empty space here. So this is where the greenhouse will go. Laura's going to try and fit that tree in her greenhouse. I've told her it's way too tall, but she says, no, 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 it'll fit. And there's no, no chance. <laughs> Yeah, it's way too tall, Laura. You have to prune it. <laughs> no, no, it won't be fine. It's, there's no way. You're gonna have to do a hard prune on it. You gotta fit it in there. There's a close-up of the blossoms on it. Just about to come out. A beautiful tree when it's in flower. After much pruning, and squeezing it in here. The tree is in the greenhouse, but it's not in the ground yet. It might be right. It might be right, Nigel. You might, it might, might have right. to prune it a little more. <laughs> Laura was a bit horrified I pruned off some of the longer roots, but it has a good root base on it. Well, it almost fits. It's, it's pretty close. So I think she'll get it in the ground just fine. Over here behind the plastic greenhouse, I've got my first benches set up and I'm just working on moving the trees now. So it's a nice area. It gets, you know, the full afternoon sun here. Yeah, it's one of the brighter areas of the yard. I've grown bonsai back here before and they've done very well. So we are getting this area cleared here so I can fit the trucks in here, the cement truck, and I'll be able to get the Porsche out. I can pull the trailer out and into the driveway over here. So yeah, it's making progress this backyard. Here's a shot of the Porsche. So it's sitting on a trailer here, and the back of the trailer is kind of on the ground. And I think there's supposed to be taillights down there, yeah. Down there there's some taillights. So, it doesn't look like it's sunk in too much, but it will be a challenge getting this Porsche out. Um, so I'll have to back the truck up, hook it up to the trailer, push it out, and then once it's out, I'm uh, going to put up, take this garage down, put up one by the driveway, one that I can work on the car under, one that's not full of holes. This one is 20, uh, probably 25 years old. And it's done really well. It was an amazing garage. It still is, we'll get a new cover for it. But uh, yeah, it stood up to all kinds of weather and the covering had lasted 25 years, which is pretty good. So yeah, there's the Porsche 911 Targa 1970. The driveway is cleared of cables now so I can get the cars in and out. So here's the cables in the ground. So they've cut them off and they're going to be joining them. I guess there'll be some kind of a a junction box where they join the cables here. We still have all the cables out the front door here. Massive cables. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Tuesday morning and it's really loud outside. <laughs> So the cables have moved from in front of our house to the neighbor's house. You can see them winding in the ground now the other direction.
It is really cool down today. It's just slightly above freezing and there's a little bit of snow this morning. So today I'm going to continue cleaning up this area, getting rid of all these tables here. I'll keep the good ones, move them over to the new area, get all these paving stones up, just clearing the area for the uh, cement pad. I'm slowly getting the new bonsai area set up here. That should be pretty nice. Uh, everything kind of neatly laid out. I moved all the black spruce back to this bench here, putting them all together. And I've been researching black spruce and it's, they're a very exciting tree. They have a very unique look to them when they're in a bog-like environment. And I'll show you some pictures of that. So that's the style that I'm trying for, is that very tight triangular style with the almost a separate Christmas tree on the top of the tree. So uh, some people say they look like arrows, you know, tall and skinny, and then they have like a little arrow tip on the top. So that's the style I'm going to try and go for with this spruce, this black spruce forest. I think it'll be very exciting and it's probably one of the most Canadian styles you'll ever see. Uh, it's These black spruce are unique to northern Canada. They go from coast to coast in northern Canada. So yeah, a really uh, cool tree. When they're growing in, uh, you know, a more regular uh, environment, they tend to look a little more like a typical spruce, but uh, they still, they're still a very tight triangular tree, not wide and spreading at all. I'm really excited about getting this black spruce forest underway. Uh, Connor mentioned that maybe I should grow some larches in the forest too. Uh, it's nice in fall. You have a backdrop of these black spruce, like dark needle trees, and then you get the bright yellow larches in front of them and oh, it just looks beautiful. I'll show you some photos of that. With all the noise in the neighborhood and the really cold weather, I'm going to leave the planting of the spruce forest for another day when it's uh, a little nicer out and quieter in the neighborhood. And I'm really excited about this. It's, uh, I'm gonna study more photos and come up with a style. I've thought about putting like a bog area in front and instead of you know using a water feature, maybe using a mirror and kind of embedding that in the soil and growing moss around it so it looks like the reflection of water. I don't know, that might look too, I'll, I'll see, I'll think about it. 
Uh, but I think it's going to, I'm really excited about getting these black spruce underway. Getting the tight triangles on these black spruces will take a bit of time. Uh, what you have to do is you have to, first I have to let these lower branches gain a bit of vigor. And then every spring you have to pinch off the terminal buds and you'll get back budding. And then you slowly reduce the branch back. As if you get back budding back here, you let that extend and grow and then you can take the tip off. And then you develop this branch and you pinch that and you get back biting and eventually, hopefully you can get chase the branch back to make it really short and compact. Uh, if not, I can uh, kill off all the lower branches and develop my, my arrow tip up here to get that black spruce style that I'm looking for, that bog black spruce style. So it'll be an exciting style. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a bonsai style like that before. Um, I'm sure someone has done it, but uh, that's my goal, is to get that black spruce bog. I think it's going to look fantastic and very unique and very Canadian. There's a tree in our neighborhood that could be a black spruce, I'm not sure. So here's a look at the needles and you can see the cones forming there. Um, if it's not a black spruce, it has that black spruce kind of style to it. And I'll show you what it looks like from the distance. We'll uh, zoom up at the top here. And you'll see that little arrowhead on the top. So I'll, I'll step back so you can see it from the distance. Here's a look at it from the distance. So you can see how the top is compact and tight. And it looks like an arrowhead. Now, there's several uh, possible explanations. Uh, they say maybe the squirrels go up and they chew on the new cones forming and it kind of bonsai's the top of it so you get that tight compact growth. Uh, there is a thing called a witch's broom which is a genetic uh, modification to the tree which causes tight growth but if this is a black spruce then you know that's just the way they grow I guess. So there's a look so you can see how it's you know got the tight little Christmas tree tops and then it's fairly bare. There's a few branches and yeah, pretty uh, sparse all the way down to the ground. There's another spruce in the neighborhood that I'll visit now, which has a similar type top. So let's go have a look at that now. There's the trees I'm heading over to look at. You can see them in the distance there. So I'll walk around and get closer to them. Here's a look at the first one. So it goes up fairly normal looking. And there's that bare spot, and up top you've got that little tight arrowhead. It's interesting on this tree, even though it has like the double apex up there, you can still see the arrowhead type shape to it, and how they're, they're separated down the middle. There's very few branches kind of overlapping each other. Yeah, so that's kind of maybe what I can style some of those uh, double trunk trees to look like. I found the other trees I was looking for. They're way over in this other neighborhood, so let me go over there and have a look at them. It's hard to get a good look at these spruce because they're in someone's backyard, but you can see the distinct arrowheads up there on the top of the tree and how sparse they are as you go down. I did find a better view here, and there they are. So they have that distinct uh, black spruce shape to them. I would say they're definitely black spruce. Lots of spring color at this house. We got the yellow forsythia out, and over here the magnolia flowers are just starting to come. Nice to see. Last night, the temperatures went down to freezing, zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and I left my prize tropical trees out here in the greenhouse and they seem to be fine. Uh, right now the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or about 51 degrees Fahrenheit. So not a bad temperature in the greenhouse here. It seems to be able to maintain, I think it was five degrees Celsius when I came out this morning, which is, I guess that's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, it, pretty cool, but not too bad. Uh, yeah. So tonight, 
it's supposed to get even colder. We're supposed to go down to minus three. So, you know, three degrees below freezing. So I'm a little worried about leaving these trees out here. You know, even though they get this beautiful natural light, which is really good for them, I don't want to risk freezing them. So I, I may bring them in at the end of the day today. It's, uh, I don't want to risk losing every tree in my greenhouse here just because it, because of the cold. I've had some questions about the hardiness of these trees that are leafing out. Um, tonight it's supposed to go down to minus three degrees Celsius, so three degrees below freezing. And so these new leaves will be frozen. And typically it doesn't damage them much. Sometimes you get a little bit of blackening around the fine edges. But generally they're not affected by freezing temperatures at this stage in their life. So. Yeah, even the larch, you know, all the needles are out here, but they're kind of tightly closed up still. They haven't fluffed out and they can take a good freeze when they're in this state. Uh, I may bring some of my more sensitive trees in like my Osage oranges. I might bring those into the greenhouse tonight. Uh, maybe my ginkgo, maybe my English oaks here. But generally, you know, everything is quite hardy they can take a freeze even though they're out in leaf. At this time of year it's generally the more hardy trees that come out into leaf like these Manitoba maples. They can take all kinds of cold. Doesn't affect them too much. So anyway I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do an update on the trees. Like I said we're going down to minus three tonight so it'll be a good test to see how all these leaves do in the freezing temperatures. I've noticed the new shoots on my Austrian pine are beginning to extend to those vertical candles. Let's go around the front here. Yeah, there's a, a good amount of needles. This tree underwent a lot last year. I cut it back, got a lot of back budding. Then I removed all those long sections, making the tree more compact. And it seems like it's, you know, growing well once again this year. I don't see any problems with the vigor. It's funny, I was leaving a, a shoot up top as a uh, sacrifice branch or sacrifice leader. I was going to grow it really tall, thicken up the trunk. And I decided I, I would leave two. One as a backup and I'm glad I did because the backup one has all kinds of strong buds on it. But the one that I intended to grow as the leader I don't know what happened to the bud on top, but it's not really budding out at all. So I'm not sure what happened to it, but uh, sometimes I get like uh, in these candles, inside the candles, I get these little worms. I guess they're pine bud worms or something. And you notice that the candle, it starts growing and then it, it just stops growing. And then you kind of squeeze the candle and they're soft. and you break it off and you find a little worm inside that's eaten all that new growth that's supposed to come out this year. So you just break it off, kill the worm and something else. Usually you get some back budding then behind where the tip candle was broken off. So yeah, I've had that. I remember one year I had, I think I found four worms on the tree and yeah, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, you just, you know, look for them, kill them, get rid of them, and hope you don't get more the next year. I'll continue working away in the yard here, clearing the spot for the new greenhouse, and on a nicer, quieter day, we'll come back and plant that black spruce forest. That'll be exciting. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>